achieved. Check, check, check. One, two. Welcome into Studio de Hefri de Quarantine as today on our Countdown to Cowboys camp, our preview to get you ready. Players report in less than a week. Today we're going to do the defensive line preview. I had multiple people asking for this in the comments of the wide receiver video. Hey, where's the defensive line? Let's go. You got it. And today I am wearing my Jeff oil change looking t-shirt. Got the Tolo patch over here. I don't know the last time I wore this, but I saw it in the closet. You got the Rangers there and the Cowboys there. I'm pretty sure this is a station thing they made for us. Um... But it felt right today. Defensive line is what we're going to talk about today as we preview how this is going to work for the Dallas Cowboys. And we start off, per use, with a history lesson. Last year, the Cowboys kept six defensive ends and four defensive tackles when they broke camp. And if you remember Mike McCarthy's first press conference, he talked about having six rushers and four interior guys. So we got a, good, we got a pretty good plan here. We can we can make a pretty good guess at what's going to happen as these camp battles go on. So what I have for you is literally every player that's on the roster currently that plays defensive end or defensive tackle, and let's talk about what their potential role is on this team. Now, obviously, we start with the locks. Demarcus Lawrence, he's going to make the team, and he's going to start at defensive end. Tyrone Crawford is going to make this team. And for now, I'm going to say he starts at right defensive end. I think there's a hope that that could be Alden Smith and that whatever, it's three guys that can get in there and you've got three guys that could potentially be really good players for you. But those are the pretty much locks and so, unless something weird happens to make the team at defensive end. Tank Lawrence will be back to his usual self. He's going to get 10 or 12 sacks. He's going to play incredible run defense. He's going to play really, really hard. He's going to be the leader of the defense. That's what Tank Lawrence is going to do. Tyrone Crawford. They've, in different years, listed him as a DN, a D-tackle, or a DL, just a defensive lineman. Currently, they have him as a defensive end, and I know he likes that better because I've talked to him after some of those defensive tackle games, and he says they're not a lot of fun because <laughs> it's like some train wrecks in there. Uh, so, for now, he's an end because they have the bodies at D-tackle where Tyrone Crawford doesn't have to be a defensive tackle. This team missed him last year. They did. I know for years we just talked about what his salary was and can we get rid of it, but they missed him last year. So Demarcus Lawrence, Tyrone Crawford, Alden Smith, they're in. This is where it gets fun, though, because we're looking for six defensive ends. Randy Gregory still hasn't been reinstated. We're looking for three more guys. I'm going to give you the names, and I'll try to work my way through ranking how likely it is that they make the team. Here's the names. Dorrance Armstrong going into his third year. I liked him as a prospect. I've liked him some in camp, but his pass rush production when he's been playing just hasn't been very good, so he's going to have to be making some strides and have a nice camp, I think, to make the team. And that's the case for all these guys. This is a, this is going to be a six-way battle for three roster spots. It's going to be tough to call, but in order of seniority... It's Dorrance Armstrong, and then the second-year guys, Joe Jackson out of Miami, Jalen Jelks out of Oregon. Am I missing a guy? Because I accidentally put Jelks twice. This is my favorite thing is to live with you watching, see if I screwed something up. Let me see here. Please hold. We're on the case. Is there a guy I missed? I wrote him twice and I forgot. Ah, there you go. That's it. I accidentally must have covered him up with him. Okay, so now I'm good. Second year defensive ends on the Cowboys roster, Joe Jackson and Jalen Jelks. And then you got three rookies, Bradley and I, Utah, fifth-round pick, Rondell Carter, James Madison, undrafted, and Ladarius Hamilton, uh, North Texas, undrafted. Six-way battle for three spots. If I got to handicap this thing, I'm going to believe my evaluation. 
I think Bradley and Nye's got a great shot to be the fourth defensive end behind Tank, Tyrone, and Alden Smith. I'm going to take Bradley and I to be that fourth guy. And when you're handicapping the race after that for fifth and sixth, mm, if I got a pick, I guess I'll say Joe Jackson and then Dorrance Armstrong rounds it out, and that's your six. But I'd love to see either Ladarius Hamilton, the North Texas kid, or I say kid, grown man, young grown man, or Rondell Carter. Like Rondell Carter at James Madison, his production is off the charts. It's James Madison, but the production's off the charts. So if one of those guys can make it tough on him, or Jalen Jelks too. Jelks, I think, when he came into the league as a rookie, he needed to add some weight to his frame. And so we'll see. But much like in the secondary where there's a whole bunch of corners and safeties really battling for a limited number of roster spots, the defensive end one is really fun too. You know, I feel like there is a drop-off after your top three. And then there may be a drop-off after number four. I'm a big Bradley and I fan. I think despite the not elite or even good athletic testing for a defensive end, he knows what he's doing on a football field, and he's a good player, and he's able to get to the quarterback. Um, so, yeah, between Dorrance, Joe Jackson, Jalen Jelks, Rondell Carter, and Ladarius Hamilton, that's a fight for two spots. And if Randy Gregory were magically reinstated tomorrow, it might be a fight for one spot. So, I love it. It's the meritocracy now. It's real. Jason Garrett said the word meritocracy, but that was crap. Now it is. At corner, at safety, at defensive end, defensive tackle, they're going to have a lot of bodies competing for a limited number of spots and a lot of bodies with some promise. So give me, as the six DNs, Lawrence Crawford, Alden Smith, Bradley and I, Dorrance Armstrong, Joe Jackson, and know that I'm kind of secretly pulling for Rondell Carter out of James Madison to take one of those spots. Pulling for it. Defensive tackles. We're looking for four of you. To me, this one is easier. Don Terry Poe and Gerald McCoy. They're your starters at D-tackle. Lock it in. Lock it up. Dunsky, right? You know that those are going to be two of them. Neville Gallimore. Boomer Sooner. Third round pick. You know that he's going to be, I think, well, no, I know. He's going to be the rotational guy behind Gerald McCoy as your three technique. And Antoine Woods should be your other nose tackle. I think it's done. The only thing that makes it a wild card is Tristan Hill. There's other guys on the roster. Justin Hamilton, who's kind of been a bounce around the league practice squad guy that they signed when Crawford got hurt, but then they traded for Michael Bennett, so they cut Justin Hamilton. Then they signed him to a futures contract, so he's on the roster. And Garrett Marino, an undrafted guy out of UAB, but there's only five names to know, and Tristan Hill's the fifth one. Problem is, Rod Marinelli's not here. So if Tristan Hill's not one of the best four, this coaching staff doesn't care. They have no vested interest in developing Tristan Hill. And he's still a young guy that had some, some flashy traits at Central Florida at times, but they just this staff just picked their own version of that in Neville Gallimore out of Oklahoma. So I think it's Don Terry Poe, it's Gerald McCoy, it's Neville Gallimore, it's Antoine Woods. Shut it down, let's go home. That is your defensive tackle group, and that is the end of that story. And how these guys perform this year will be really interesting because Poe as the starter instead of Antoine Woods as the starter I think is great where Antoine Woods is not asked to be the anchor of the defense. He's asked to be a guy that rotates in to help be an anchor. And Gerald McCoy and Neville Gallimore is an upgrade over Malik Collins and whoever. Definitely over Malik Collins and Tristan Hill. Uh, so I like I, I kind of like this group. It's kind of a Band-Aid group. Antoine Woods, I think, is more of a Band-Aid than like a ascending player. Gerald McCoy and Don Terry Poe are Band-Aids, and Neville Gallimore, you're hoping, has a bright future as uh, as a three technique there. 
But I kind of like that group. For the short term, I like that group. The defensive end group, I kind of like. Love Tank. Love the potential of Alden Smith, like Tyrone Crawford, like Bradley and I. But they're working, they're working on something there on that defensive line. So there you go, defensive line preview for the Cowboys. Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Huh? Make sure you're subscribed, youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. Please mash the thumbs up button. Let the world know, man, that was a good video, Jeff. Thank you for your effort. What else do we want to leave in the comments today? What's your favorite soda pop and or cold beer? I like Miller Lite, Dos Equis. I like Roller Town Lite. Um, I accidentally drink too much Fireball when I get to going. And soda's tough. I try not to drink a bunch of it, but I love Dr. Pepper. I really like Pepsi. I like Mountain Dew as a mix-it-up soda. You know, not too much of it, but just a little hint, a little taste. Cherry Coke's the best. What am I doing? Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke's the best. Wild, wild Cherry Pepsi is good, too. So there you go. That it. That is it. That's your defensive line preview. And uh, we'll keep this thing cooking. Keep checking back on the YouTube channel for uh, the different position groups. And we're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. It's almost football time in Texas. I'll catch you guys on the flip side.